Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today I want to show you how to crochet the Irish Emeralds Cape. Um, for this project, you're going to need a yarn. I'm going to actually make this into a summer version of this original design. I'm going to be using um, Premier Yarns Cotton Fair. This is not an endorsement for the yarn. This is just what I'm going to be using. Um, I believe I'm going to need two to three of these. The jury is still out on how many. I will post when this video um, comes out. You can just look at the bottom of this screen and I'll show you exactly how many of these balls that you will need for this. Each of these has 317 yards. I believe I'm going to need three. It may only take two. Um, I will let you know. And the other thing you're going to need, oh also, um, if you want to use another type of yarn, you can pick any kind of yarn that is a two. Let's see if I can show you the um, the label here. That is a two, which is a fine uh, thickness of, of yarn. And I'm going to be using a size I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. Yes, I know this is larger than what is recommended by these size yarns, but that's what I like to, to use to get a really nice drape. Um, I also recommend that you have a yarn needle handy to hide the loose threads and to add to the bottom of, of this cape when it's completed. I'm going to be using some beads. You're going to need 14 beads. You can use anything you like. I'm just using this for the weight and for the sparkly effect. Um, some other options. I mean, you can get really decorative. You can use whatever, you know, beads. Uh, you would like so so please be free to use your um, your creativity here and I also recommend um, a pair of scissors for cutting loose ends okay let's go ahead and get started okay so to begin we are going to start with our our chain go ahead and you work a slip knot and we're going to be starting off with 84 chains so go ahead and chain 84 Okay, after chaining 84, we are going to slip stitch to the first chain. Be sure that you do not twist the chain. And go ahead and work a slip stitch in that very first chain. Just like so. Okay, now following the pattern, we are to chain two. This chain does not count as a double crochet. And then we begin by double crocheting. And I'm actually going to double crochet over this loose thread as we go. I want to double crochet in each chain around. Okay, notice that I am just crocheting in the side of the chain. If you prefer to crochet in the back bump, feel free to do that. We will not be working um, on this chain on the other side again. So whatever you do here is going to be the way it's going to look um, in the final, you know, when, once the project is finally completed. So I'm just going to crochet my double crochets all the way around. After I've crocheted all the way around, I'm just going to join to the top of the first double crochet with a slip stitch, just like that. Okay, so now we're ready for row number two. We're going to chain three. We're going to um, skip the first two stitches. One, two. Remember now this chain does not count as a stitch. And we're going to front post treble crochet in the next two. Now if you've never done a post stitch, instead of going in through the top, you're just giving it a belt by going around the stitch like this and then completing the treble crochet as you normally would. Now we're going to work in front of these two stitches that we just worked and we're going to treble crochet around the two skipped stitches like this. Again, front post treble, just wrapping the hook around, giving it a belt with that treble crochet. Okay, after we complete those two treble crochets. We are actually going to do something a little different. We're going to work in between these two stitches and by just going in the hole right here. And we're going to be adding two stitches to these this this round. We're going to do two or complete two double crochets in that space just like that. 
Okay, now we're going to repeat that all the way around. We're going to skip the next two stitches and we're going to work front post treble crochets in the next two stitches. Working in front of the stitches we just completed, we're going to front post treble in the next or, or the two stitches that we skipped. And just like we did before, we're going to work two double crochets in between this stitch and the next stitch. Let me go ahead and give you a view of what we're doing here. So after every four stitches with this cabling um, stitch, stitching that we're doing here, we're actually adding two stitches to the round, okay? So you're going to crochet these four stitches like I showed you and then add two stitches working in between these two stitches, the last stitch, actually not the last stitch worked, but it's actually the first stitch worked, or second stitch, well anyway. Um, go ahead and work two stitches in between. I'll do this one more time for you just so that any confusion uh, might just completely go away. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble crochet, the next two, now working in front of the last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two skipped stitches. And now we're going to add two stitches by working in between the stitch of the cable and the next stitch. We're not going to work that next stitch, we're just working before that next stitch. Okay, so go ahead and work that all the way around. And then don't forget to work those last two double crochets in between that cable and the next stitch, which happens to be the turning chain, which again does not count as a stitch in our stitch count. At this point, you should have 126 stitches plus the turning chain. And we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first treble crochet of the round. Okay, now we're going to turn. It's a very important that you turn at this point. Okay, we are going to chain two. Now we're going to be increasing uh, two stitches in between each repeat as we go around. We're going to work two double crochets in each double crochet that we worked in between those stitches. So we're not working in between stitches now, we're just working in the tops of the stitches for these increases on those two those two double crochets that you find in between. And before we go any further, let me say one more thing. Just to be careful, if you if you came out evenly with your stitch count, you probably are fine. But you may want to just go around and make sure that you have those two stitches in between each beginning cable, okay? Um, it's very important that you have 126 stitches or else the stitch count as we go forward is going to be off, okay? So after we've made uh, two double crochets in those first double crochets, then we're going to do four back post double crochets over that cable. One. Now remember, these are these are back post double crochets, not trebles. Okay. I'm not trying to be confusing by mixing it up, but it just has a lot to do with the height of these stitches as you crochet them along. Okay, so that is going to be our repeat all the way around. I'll do it for you one more time. We're going to do two double crochets in the next double crochet, and those are in the next two double crochets, rather. And that is working through the top loops like you normally would. And then when you get to the four stitches of the cable, you work four back post double crochets, one in each of those of what they were front post trebles when we worked them on the other side. So four back post double crochets. So go ahead and work that all the way around. At the end of row three, you go ahead and join to the top 
of the first double crochet of the round and you should have at this point 168 stitches. It's very important that you have that many stitches that you've increased as we've gone along. So you might want to just give a quick visual check all the way around because otherwise you know how painful ripping out is if you if you didn't have the right number of stitches. Okay, so now we're going to turn and this is row four now and this officially begins the Celtic weave um, in the most traditional sense. Okay, so we're going to chain, let's see, three and we are going to be doing the same thing all the way around and as you can see you've you've increased these four stitches in between these cables and this this round is going to bring it all together okay so we skip the first two stitches and we're going to front post treble crochet whoops let's try that one again we're going to front post treble crochet in the next two stitches this will be working over that cable at first. Now working in front of the last two stitches you just made, we're going to front post treble and the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, make sure you get all four of those stitches. Now working in those four double crochets, which were our increased stitches, we're going to do the same thing. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble crochet, and the next two stitches working in front of these last two stitches front post treble crochet in the next two stitches and we're going to do this all the way around over all of 168 stitches okay I'll do this for you again skip the next two front post treble in the next two stitches Working in front of the last two stitches, front post treble, and the two skipped stitches. Okay, so go ahead and do this all the way around. At the end of round four, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first treble, front post treble of the round, or the first stitch of the round. Okay, now we're going to turn and with the back side facing us we're going to work row number five we're going to chain three okay now to begin this row we're going to skip the first four stitches one two three four or the first um, set the first cluster set of four stitches and then we're going to back post treble crochet in the next two stitches. This is working the Celtic weave in the round. Okay, when you work this normally without being in the round, it's slightly different. So if any of you have worked this stitch, let's say in a blanket where you're working it in rows, it's worked just slightly differently in that instead of skipping or instead of just working the first two stitches, you're going to skip the first four stitches. And then so I've worked the next two stitches. Now we're going to go back and we're going to work the last two stitches skipped, which were these two. We're going to work back post treble and they are going to cross as seen in the front. So um, I'm going to reach around. Let me show you. I'm going to reach around towards the front and the first stitch that we're going to go around is right here. Okay, it's the, it's the one furthest to the right. And then we work our back post treble crochets. I'm going to do this a couple times for you. Okay, and then we do the next stitch, which I didn't give you a very good view of. But what I wanted to say next is that make sure you use these two fingers, the tall man and the thumbkin, to help you find these two stitches that are down here. Okay, so now we're going to work the next four stitches. We're going to skip the next two which are these two stitches and we're going to back post treble in the next two stitches. This is probably the most difficult round of the project because of working from behind. Okay now I'm going to go back and I'm going to find 
this stitch. I'm going to work a treble crochet around the two stitches that we skipped. And the next one will be this stitch right here. Okay, I'm going to do that again after we complete those four. Skip the next two stitches, which are these two. And you're going to get go for the next two, and these are always going to be leaning the opposite direction of these two. Working back post treble. And then working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side. I'm going to bring my hook right around like this. And I'll show you what that looks like from the other side. Okay, those two. So we're going to go ahead and work that all the way around. Let me show you what it should look like with the front side facing. See how these are, are crossing and intertwined there? That's what you're going for. That if your back or the front side rather looks like this, this is the opposite of where we're working now. It if you look if it looks like that, you're doing well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this round and show you the connection. Okay, I've come all the way around and I wanted to show you the back side because um, I just wanted to make sure that you understood what I'm going to do next. I'm going to be working back post trebles and I'm going to work these two and then I'm going to work these two and I'm, then I'm going to connect into the top. I just wanted to show you what it looks like because it's a little bit off-centered and that's normal. So as I come around for these last two, I'm going to skip these two and back post treble in the next two. Now working in front of these two as seen from the front side, I'm going to come around and do back post trebles in those last two stitches. Okay, now they've all been worked. Now I'm going to work a slip stitch in the top of that first treble of the round. And let's turn around and look. And you can get a, a visual check to see that it looks consistent. If you see any gaps that you probably haven't done all the stitches. So that is um, completed. And I want you also to also notice that by doing it this way in the round, it's a little bit you know off-centered, but it hides the turning chain very well so that you don't, there, here's the turning chain here, which people really are not going to notice much, but it just about, it just completely disappears when you get to this section. So this is what your collar should look like after that row. Okay, so we just finished round number five. Okay, don't worry about this curling up. The last row we're going to work is going to take care of that. Okay, so um, after working that, you are going to turn to the front side. And for the next four rows, rows six, seven, eight, and nine, we are simply going to repeat rows four and five that we've already worked. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to chain three. And we're going to skip the four, first one, two, three, four stitches. And we are going to go towards, or let me look, let me look, look at another way. Here's like a cross with four stitches. You just go to the next set of four stitches to begin. So we're going to do two front post treble crochets. Now working in front of these two. We're going to work on these two stitches that are kind of hidden there a little bit with the two stitches, the last two that we skipped. We skipped four, but just the last two that we skipped are the two that we go back and get. Now these two, the first two that we skipped, will be amongst the last four stitches that are worked once we come around and join, just as a little reminder. Okay, so we're going to do that all the way around. We're going to skip the next two stitches that are hidden there, or it's 
you know, underneath and we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches, go ahead and front post treble in those two stitches that are that are hiding there. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and work this all the way around and I will show you the last four stitches. Okay, that brings us around to the last four stitches. And I'm going to go ahead and, and work these so that you can kind of get used to what it looks like. And then working in front of these two stitches, we're going to do the two stitches that are kind of hidden back there. Remember to use the fingers of your non-dominant hand to help you find these stitches. That really does make it a much better journey. Okay, and then after I've done those, it's time to just join to the first treble crochet of the round, just like that. Okay, now we're going to repeat row five. Okay, so this is technically row number seven. And go ahead and chain three. We are going to skip four stitches. One, two, three, four, or the the first set of crossed stitches here. And then we're going to back post treble in the next two stitches. Okay, after we get those two stitches worked, working in front of these stitches as seen from this side, from the front side, going to go in front of those. And then we're going to treble crochet around each of the two stitches that are closest, or the last two stitches of the four that were skipped. Okay, now we're going to just continue this. All, well, actually, from this point on, we're going to skip the next two. One, two, and then back post treble in the next, next two stitches. And working in front of these last two stitches, as seen from the front side, go ahead and back post treble in those two hidden stitches that were just skipped. Okay, so let, let me show you what it's going to look like from the front side. As you can see, we're getting more depth, and you can see the Celtic knot effect as the stitches literally are woven in and amongst themselves. So go ahead and repeat round number, this would be round number seven. Okay, this is uh, a repeat of round number five. Okay, as we come around to the last two stitches, just to show you what that would look like, here's the stitch that we're going to connect with. Okay, so we're going to skip, oh, let me try it back up here. So we're going to skip the next two stitches. We're going to back post double crochet. These are the, the two stitches that we skipped at the very beginning of the round. So we're going to go ahead and do these two next. And then after that, we're going to work in front of these stitches as seen from the front. And we're going to come back and get these remaining two stitches that are kind of hidden in there. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first treble, back post treble. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn and I'll show you what your collar should look like at this point. Okay, we're getting very close to being finished with this. Okay, so that ends row number seven. So now we need to repeat rows four and five, like I just showed you one more time and then after that repeat row four again so we're going to do one row with the front side facing another with the back side facing and then a third with the front side facing so go ahead and do those three rounds and once you finish that i'll show you um, the round that will discontinue the celtic weave okay, after completing the 10 rows this is what the collar should look like i'll go ahead and hold this up so you can see what I have here. Okay, now if your collar is curving a little bit, like this section is here, 
This next row that we're going to work should take care of this. Okay, this is going to be row number number 11. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn and I'm going to have the back side facing. Okay, now we're only going to chain two this time. One, two, and we're going to work back post double crochets, not treble, but back post double crochets around each stitch as we go along. So we're just going to work them straight. We're not going to be crossing anything, just as they come along. Now as you do this, make sure that you do four for every um, every grouping of four stitches. Okay, so don't want to leave any of these stitches out. Okay, now our stitch count at the end of this row should remain constant. And, and for those of you who are new to reading crochet patterns, um, that's one thing to keep in mind. If you do not see a new number for the stitch count, that's because it has not changed. So our stitch count has not changed since row three, where we had 168 stitches. So that's going to remain constant um, through this row as well. Okay, so go ahead and and work these back post double crochets and when you do that this is what's going to happen it's going to make it look like this along that edge and it's going to even things out quite a bit after this row we will begin the lace portion so i'll go ahead and work this around and i'll show you the connection at the end of round 11 just slip stitch to the top of that first back post double crochet at the beginning of the round let's go ahead and turn and this is the completed collar. I just wanted you to take a look to see where we are. Now, if you're having difficulty counting the rows while you're working on this, I guess I could have shown you this earlier, but I'll show it to you now. Obviously, this is one row, two, and then three. And then we can count the, the parts where the... Um, where the stitches cross. So this would be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the ten, and then the last row, eleven, right down here. Okay, now we're going to move on to the lace portion. And for this section, as the pattern says, um, the right side will be facing you for all the rounds. Do not turn at the end of any of the rows, or actually any of the rounds. Um, the treble crochets will be worked with the same side facing each round. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, as we begin round one of the lace, we're going to chain three. We are going to skip the first two stitches and we're going to front post treble in the next two. We are beginning a, a column of cables here that we will continue. Now working in front of these last two stitches we just worked, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, now we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. We are going to skip the next four stitches, which is the next uh, crossed section here. One, two, three, four. And we're going to single crochet in between that last stitch that we just skipped and the next stitch. So go ahead and single crochet there. After that, we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Skip the next four stitches and then we're going to skip two more stitches so that we can form another cable here. So we actually skip a total of six stitches when we when we go to do this. But the way the pattern is written, we skip four and then we skip two more. It's basically doing the same thing. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier to write with the repeat. Now working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the last two stitches that we just skipped. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and do that again. That is the repeat. So we chain five. We skip the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. 
single crochet in between that last stitch and the next stitch like so and we're going to chain five more one two three four five we're going to skip the next four stitches and then we skip two more so that we can form the cable front post treble in the next two stitches now working in front of the last two stitches worked we're going to front post treble in the last two stitch stitches that we skipped okay so basically what we're doing here we're forming like here and here and here is actually called a four stitch post cable or four stitch cable okay so I'm going to just go ahead and continue that around I'll do it one more time for you chain five skip the next four one two three four single crochet in between those two double crochets chain five one two three four five skip the next four one two three four and then skip two more one two and then it's time to make that cable front post treble in those two stitches and working in front of the two stitches we just worked go ahead and front post treble in those the last two stitches that were skipped okay so go ahead and and work this all around the bottom of the cape okay at the end of round one of the lace we're just going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that very first treble crochet of the row okay now to start round number two we're going to go ahead and chain three and we're going to front post treble and go ahead and wrap that twice front post treble in the first four stitches that's one two three and four now we're going to chain five one two three four five we're going to single crochet in this next chain space we're going to chain five again one two three four five and we're going to single crochet in the next chain space and so that is the repeat i'll go ahead and oh wait a minute good one more thing chain five three four five okay, i'm going to show you that repeat one more time for round number two and that would be front post treble in the next four stitches these are the four stitches that make up the cable that's going to be cascading down okay and this is going to be followed by chain five one two three four five single crochet in the next chain space chain five again one two three four five and then single crochet in that next chain and then five more chains one two three four five and then front post treble crochet in the next four stitches so it begins all over again so that is going to be the repeat let's see if i can find this stitch there you go it's a little trickier for me working these post stitches from the front side for some reason when I do these cables but it's very doable though okay so let me stop and just show you what that repeat looks like okay it will look better as we go along and add more connections to that at the end of round two we're going to join with a slip stitch after that last chain five in the top of that first front post treble that was worked okay so for row i'm sorry round three we're going to chain three one two three and just like we did in the first round we're going to skip the first two stitches this is just the crossing of the cable front post treble in the next two stitches working in front of those last two stitches we're going to front post treble crochet in the next two stitches I'm sorry, in the two stitches that were skipped. 
after crossing the cables, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to single crochet in this chain space right here. And then after that, we're going to chain, let's see, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to single crochet in the next chain space, just like that. And then we're going to chain one, two, three, four, five again, and single crochet in that next chain space. And then we're going to chain three, one, two, three. And then that brings us back to the repeat again. And I'll do that repeat with you one more time. We're going to skip two stitches of the cable. We're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of the last two stitches, we'll go ahead and front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. Then we're going to chain three, one, two, three. And then we're going to single crochet in the next chain space. We're going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and single crochet in the next chain space, and chain five more, one, two, three, four, five, and single crochet in the next chain space, and then we're going to chain three, one, two, three. And if it helps, you're going to chain three before and after every time you do the cable. So for the cable, we're going to skip two, front, post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, go ahead and front post treble, treble in the two skipped stitches. Okay, and that, that is your repeat. So go ahead and work that all the way around. And then we're going to end with a chain three and a slip stitch to the top of that very first treble crochet of the row. Okay, now we move on to row number four. We're going to chain three, one, two, three. We're going to front post treble crochet in each of those post stitches. Oops, let's go ahead and try that again. We didn't get, there you go, didn't get low enough. There we go. Okay, after we've done that, it's time to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to skip this next chain space. Okay, we're going to skip this space and we're going to single crochet in the next chain space. And then after we do that, we chain five. And then we're going to single crochet in the next chain space. And then we chain five again. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to skip the next chain space. And then we're going to work four treble crochets or front post trebles in the next four stitches. Let me, let me try that one again. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so this is um, the second repeat that I'm showing you. Chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Skip the first chain space. And in the next chain space, we single crochet, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, single crochet in the next chain space, and then we single crochet, I'm sorry, um, chain five more, one, two, three, four, five, skip this last chain of the repeat, and then back to our, our front post treble crochets on that cable. Okay, so this is what 
this is starting to look like. Alright, so go ahead and finish that all the way around. Okay, round four ends with a chain five and a slip stitch to the top of that first treble, front post treble of the round. Now we start row number five. We're going to chain three, one, two, three, and we are going to cross the cables for this round. We're going to skip the first two stitches. We're going to front post treble crochet in the next two, working in front of the last two stitches that we just worked, we're going to front post treble crochet in the two stitches that were skipped. Now um, we are going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to skip the next chain space and we're going to single crochet in the next chain space. Now we're going to chain seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to skip the next chain space here and we are going to skip the next, um, rather the next two post stitches and we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. So we're actually starting our second repeat of what we're going to be doing in this round. And then, I'm sorry, working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. Okay, so we're going to do that again. So we've already done our cable. Chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven skip the next chain space, single crochet in the next chain space, chain seven again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, skip the next chain space here, and then we're on to skipping the next two stitches to form our next cable. So I'll go ahead and do that cable, which is the beginning of our third repeat, front post treble in those two stitches, Working in front of those two stitches, we're going to front post cable in the two stitches that we skipped. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that repeat. Okay, so at the end of this repeat, you should have like a diamond formed here. Okay? So go ahead and repeat that all the way around. This again is round number five. Okay, this is what you should have after completing round number five. Okay, notice that you have a nice little diamond here in the lace part, part and then you have the cables in between there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to repeat rounds two through five three more times. And then we're going to repeat round two, three, and four one more time. So go ahead and do that. This would be for round six through 20. And then when you come back, we will do the last round together. Okay, I am about to attach my last ball of yarn for this project. And before I do that, I wanted to show you how to load the beads that I'm going to be using. I've decided to try these green beads instead of the original ones that I may have showed you at the beginning, but actually you can use whatever beads you'd like. I just think these might match the project better. So I'm going to use using a beading needle, which has a very interesting eye. It's very easy to uh, thread just like this. And we would just thread each bead on like this and this really helps it to gently put the bead onto the yarn. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and load the beads that I need. Um, for this project you will need a total of 14 beads because there are 14 cables where the bead will be. Now you do not need a curved 
You do not need a curved needle. They do make these needles in straight uh, shape. They're not, don't have to be curved for this project. It just so happens that this is the only one that I have in my stash. Okay, I actually prefer a straight needle, but but anyway, say go ahead and we're going to go ahead and load 14 of these beads or whatever beads that you'd like to complete your project. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, after I finish loading those 14 beads onto the thread or onto this um, yarn that you're using, I can just go ahead and take this needle off and I'll just reconnect this strand to my project and just continue crocheting as normal and I'll just continue to push these beads back okay until I get to those rows I'm only about two rows away from needing to add these so just go ahead and do that if you if you don't want to do beads at the ends of of the cape that's that's totally fine but I think with the cotton material it does help to give a little bit of weight and a little bit of a shimmer to the final product Okay, now we are ready to begin round 21, which is the last round on the cape portion of this project. Okay, now if you haven't already done so, you need to make sure that your beads are loaded on to the, the yarn before we begin this round. Okay, so go ahead and load 14 beads if you haven't done it at the last change um, of that last scan. Okay, so I'm just going to assume that you've already got those loaded on. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and begin. This is done a little differently um, from the other rounds. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to chain one. And we're going to work six um, treble crochets. But we're going to work them in between. Here's the, here's the center of this cable. We're going to work them in the center. First, we're going to work three. That's one, two, three. Okay. Now I'm going to go find where my beads are. And I'm going to bring them, bring a few of these up closer to where my yarn is. Okay, so I'm going to slide, I'm just going to slide one bead like this, and I'm going to do one chain, and that's all you need to do to add that bead on. And then we're going to do three more treble crochets in that same place. One, two, let me, let me try that last one again, I have my beads sliding up on me here three so we have three then we and we chain the bead and then we do three more okay after that we're going to chain seven one two three four five six seven we're going to skip the next chain and then we're going to single crochet in that middle chain. And then we're going to chain seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to skip the next chain. And we're going to work three treble crochets. This is splitting the cable in two. It's right is worked between the second and the third stitch. Okay, so now that I have three, three stitches that I'm gonna slide the bead right there, give it a chain, and then I'm gonna do three more treble crochets right in that same place. For some reason I keep having trouble with that last treble crochet. Okay, and so that's what you're going to have there. Now I'm going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My beads keep sliding up so I have to slide them back. 
Okay, and now we're going to skip the next chain, single crochet in the next chain, and then seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Skip the next chain, and then we'll be making another three trebles, chain one with a bead, and then three trebles, three trebles right in that center. So that is the repeat all the way around. Okay, so go ahead and do that yarn, or do that row all the way around. We're going to end the round by after doing our chain seven and joining with the slip stitch to that very first treble crochet of the round. And we're going to go ahead and fasten it off, give it a chain, a little tug, and get your scissors, leave a nice long strand so that we can hide that with our yarn needle. Okay, so that is the end of this project, but let me show you one more thing on how to hide some loose strands quickly. Okay, I'm going to use my yarn needle, I'm going to thread the yarn, and with the back side facing you, I'm going to run this stitch down into a couple of stitches here. Um, there's no hard rules about you know how to do this. You just want to hide the the loose strand as easily as possible. I'm going to actually run it under these six stitches here. Okay, and give that a little, and I think I think that's going to be hidden pretty sufficiently. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a little clip very carefully, make sure I don't clip my good stitches there, and that thread is hidden. So I'm just going to need to go back and do a couple more loose strands where I connected the balls of yarn, and then this project is going to be ready to wear very shortly. Let me just give you a view without that strand of some of this lace here. Okay, And I will say that about this cotton yarn, any yarn that has cotton in it or or is, is predominantly cotton like this yarn, um, it will in time, it's going to fall out a bit. It will stretch a little bit in time. So um, do know that that is the case with this. If this isn't exactly as long as you'd like, um, give it a week or two. Or if you just want to hang it in a closet um, on a hanger, it will actually fall out due to the weight. Okay, well this ends the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any more videos that I, um, I release in the coming, coming days and coming weeks. God bless everybody. Bye-bye.